to the Loch Ness Rescue Show. Earlier this term, we attended an after-school interviewing class, and as a result of this, we were taken out to do some real interviewing. Pity it was the wettest Saturday ever. And a shame my coat wasn't waterproof. Anyway, here's my interview with Natalia. I'm here today with Natalia, who is a part of the Loch Ness Rescue Team. So Natalia, how long have you been in the rescue team and how did you find out about it? Hi, um, I was always aware of the, the rescue service um, and Loch Ness um, and I've been, inv I've been involved now for five months and I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot of intense training and there's quite a lot of fundraising and it's like um, very active um, as a volunteer. There's very, a lot of um, activity going on and you have to really be committed and I've been like involved in boating like since I was about 17 and I've always really loved like Loch Ness. Um, and can you tell me about the qualifications you need for this job and how you get them? You don't need any qualifications for the actual to get on as a crew member because you're trained up and everything is done in, in like in house sort of training. Um, and you get trained in navigation and um, safety and various things with charts and everything. And it's different scenarios of rescuing. What attracted you to this job? Um, I just really wanted to, like to help, um, and I also like um, I, I like adrenaline sort of stuff as well, and um, I like the outdoors, and as well the fact of rescuing and saving people's lives, and the history of Loch Ness Rescue Service, and you can Google it and find out all about it if you need to. I thought I was chatty, but Natalia could talk for Ireland. So Rachel, how did you get on? Thanks for asking, Rebecca. Well, I really enjoyed the, enjoyed the whole experience. Have a look and see what you think of my interview. So Michael, um, the boats and equipment, are they expensive to buy and maintain? The boats are very expensive to buy. Uh, each boat, uh, fully equipped out, runs into about £150,000, which is quite a considerable amount of money. And where does the funding come from? The funding mainly comes from uh, uh, funders, uh, you know, the Euro European money, lottery money, uh, doing uh, collections on the street, selling tickets, anything you can possibly think of to raise a, raise a couple of pounds. Could you tell me a bit about your most memorable rescue? Well, most memorable rescue is about uh, two years ago. Uh, I actually wasn't with Loch Ness Rescue at the time. I was down at home and I was out on my own boat and uh, a man and his, and his son uh, both were in canoes and got into difficulties and uh, I managed to rescue those two. Have you ever had to be rescued yourself? Fortunately not, touch wood, and I hope not to, and not in the near future anyway. Um, and have you ever been injured during a rescue? No, I've never been injured during a rescue either. No, uh, that's part of, that's part of, comes into part of your training, uh, that you do things uh, safely and under strict regulations, and uh, that way you don't get injured, or hopefully you don't get injured, you try not to anyway. How about you? Did you? Was your interview easy, Chloe? Well, my interview was pretty awkward because the interviewee seemed really nervous and kept looking at the ground instead of me. But I made the best of it anyway. So, William, what happens when the rescue squad are called out? Well, all of our crew have got a, a beeper. Uh, when someone calls 999 and asks for help on the water, the Coast Guard uh, activate the beepers. And as many of our crews are, are, that are available all make their way to the station. We get the boat in the water as quickly as we can and we head off to wherever we're needed. Does the rescue team only go out in emergencies or do they go on patrol as well? well uh, we're only called out in emergencies. Uh, we're tasked by the Coast Guard if someone calls 999 or if they're they radio to the Coast Guard they need help. But we also, every week, we have training sessions where we're out on the lock with the boats, making sure that we're ready when we're needed. What is the most common type of rescue you're called out to? Mostly in the summertime we get people who have problems with their boat engines or they run out of petrol. Uh, it's, only, it's only occasionally we're called out to, to something where someone's in real danger. How many people are in the rescue team altogether and how many go out at one time? We have two stations at the minute. We've got a crew in Kinnegal, in Lurgan, and another crew in Ardbo. Each crew have around about 20 members, and they're always on call. And the first five that get to the station, uh, they go out on the boat. How do you feel before and after the rescue? Well, once we've been uh, paged out, uh, 
on the way to the station, you don't know what you're going to find when you get there. So you don't know if it's going to be a simple, someone's run out of petrol, or someone's in serious danger. So there's a bit of nervous anticipation. Once we get out in the rescue, and everybody's back safely, it's mainly a feeling of relief that, that everyone's safe and back in one piece. It was a great day, wasn't it girls? I definitely enjoyed it. I can't wait to do something the next time. Why don't you think about signing up for an after school club? If you find, want to find out more, go and see Miss Osborne. Until next time, bye! bye.